Socrates as an anti-democrat is mainly based on his critique he launches in Plato's book, The Republic. There, Socrates famously characterizes democracy as the rule of the unwise, corrupt mob. Like children in a sweet shop, the democratic herd pursues pleasure only, rewarding sweet talkers and flatterers with the power of political office, who in turn exploit politics for their own gratification. He argues, those who are experts at winning elections and nothing else will eventually dominate democratic politics and leave the door open for opportunistic rulers that manipulate them for personal gain. The reason for this is that most people do not have the kinds of talents that enable them to think well about the difficult issues that politics involves. But in order to win office or get a piece of legislation passed, politicians must appeal to these people's sense of what is right or not right. Hence, the state will be guided by very poorly worked out ideas that experts in manipulation and mass appeal use to help themselves win office. Plato's democracy, it is worth noting, is not the modern notion of a mix of representative democracy and republicanism, but rather direct democracy by what he terms the poor masses by way of pure majority rule. The fact that we have a different government than Athens doesn't mean we don't share similar problems. Socrates was worried about the problems posed by an uneducated and easily led population having power over the state. Socrates compares the population at large to a strong but near-sighted shipowner whose knowledge of seafaring is lacking. The quarreling sailors are politicians, and the ship's navigator, a stargazer, is the philosopher. The sailors flatter themselves with claims to knowledge of sailing, though they know nothing of navigation, and are constantly vying with one another for the approval of the shipowner to captain the ship, going so far as to stupefy the shipowner with drugs and wine. Meanwhile, they dismiss the navigator as a useless stargazer, though he is the only one with adequate knowledge to direct the ship's course. The Kate of the Republic describes how a democracy is unlikely to be a stable political solution, since it offers freedom but neglects the demands of proper statecraft. Plato therefore predicts an almost certain collapse of democracy and decline into tyranny, a total loss of freedom. Why does democracy involve a neglect of statecraft? Plato argues that in a system where political power lies in the hands of the people it is not guaranteed, in fact is unlikely, that those best equipped to rule will get a chance to manage public affairs. Instead the loudest voices will dominate, irrational, ill-motivated decisions will be made and the complex arena of politics which is in need of careful ordering and management will turn into a crazy circus. Jonathan Wolfe in his introduction to political philosophy summarizes Plato's argument like this, ruling is a skill, like medicine or navigation. It is rational to leave the exercise of skills to experts. In a democracy, however, the people rule and the people are not experts. Therefore, democracy is irrational. Plato believed that expertise is the critical attribute of a leader, he criticizes democracy for seldom producing such characters. Rather, it elects popular spinsters who are effective in manipulating popular opinion. Plato, therefore, believed that philosophers should rule philosopher kings. A true philosopher is someone that is in love with knowledge and the search for true reality. Those who seek reality are those best qualified to guide as they have the greatest knowledge at their disposal. There is a lot we can learn from Socrates, Plato and his work in the Republic. Perhaps where democracies are concerned, we must remain wary of the ignorance and hysteria that Plato forewarned us of, to halt regression into tyrannical practice. There is one good, knowledge, and one evil, ignorance. Thus spoke the anti-democratic Socrates. Education is the best hope for a democracy. A population which understands the traits needed in a leader, knows the difference between a con artist and a legitimate leader, and knows which path forward to take is the difference between an effective democracy and Socrates' nightmare. While in our democracy the typical voter doesn't need to worry about being placed in a position of power by lottery, they do need to understand enough to select the right person to have in power in their stead. While the idea that the best argument against democracy is a five-minute conversation with the average voter may still ring true, improving the education of the average voter weakens that argument. Democracy is the worst form of government except all those other forms, so said Winston Churchill, noted champion of democratic ideals. 
Any government is only as good as its rulers. In a democracy, this means that the general population must be properly educated to rule themselves.